Welcome back to BJP Let's Talk, guys. I hope you're having a great day. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button down below right now. Be notified when new videos go live. New videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. here on the channel. Now, today it is super, super hot once again. If you guys saw my previous video, it was super, super hot that day as well. We have like a heat wave thing going on right now, so it's super hot. I'm wearing black. I got some fresh tattoos over here, so I got to be a little bit careful about how I'm doing this and make sure that they don't get uh, get too much in the sun because it's going to burn really bad. So today's video is going to be uh, some kind of general maintenance kind of thing because I have some stuff that I need to do on my Jeep here. So uh, it's going to be like a general maintenance kind of video and just show you guys the basic things you guys can check and go over. And basically you're going to be able to save yourself a lot of money. So my previous one, I did the oil change, which could save you like $60 or something like that. So if you combine that with all these, you could save yourself quite a bit of money from bringing your car in to do the general maintenance stuff that they recommend and tell you to do. Uh, some stuff I will tell you that you should probably go to the dealership for. Uh, but this kind of stuff where it's just like basic stuff, then I'm going to say just do it yourself. Order on Amazon down below and uh, just do it yourself because it's going to save you a lot of money and uh, it doesn't really take that long. So I'm actually going to move the Jeep here over into the shade over there. So let me do that now and then we'll go over what we're going to do. It's a little bit better over here in the shade. So now the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and pop our hood latch down here. I already did, we should pop the little hood latch there. I know some of you guys probably don't do anything with maintenance on your car or anything like that. So that's kind of what these videos are for. I'm um, just kind of your average everyday person who might not do that kind of stuff, but wants to save a little bit of money and thinks they could get a little bit dirty and get this stuff done. So for the most part, it's really simple. And uh, yeah, you're just gonna pop your hood up here. And uh, yeah, there's a couple different things we're gonna look at here and a couple different things that we're gonna do. Uh, so if you saw my previous video with the oil change, if you haven't, then you probably didn't do your oil change. You didn't check your oil or anything like that. So if you haven't seen that video or didn't do an oil change recently, uh, you're going to want to check your oil level. So to do that, your dipstick is going to be right back here. Your dipstick is going to be right back here in the back left if you have the 3.6 V6. I think it might be the same on all of them. I'm not sure, but in my case, my dipstick's back here. Usually it's just going to have a big yellow handle on it, and that's going to be your oil uh, dipstick. So grab some paper towel, something like that, and just go ahead and check your oil levels. All right, so to do this, you're gonna wanna pull your dipstick out, grab your paper towel, and just wipe down the bottom of it like this, just like that, and then put it back in, and then pull it back out once more. And when you do this, just grab it so you can see, and you just wanna look on the oil level here, and you just wanna look between the little dashed lines and the two little circles there, and just look at your oil level. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit hard to see, especially if you have fresh oil in there. Uh, but you just want to look on there and see where it lands. And just make sure it lands between the min and the max level on that, and you should be good to go. I do want to note that when you're doing anything with your oil, like checking it and stuff like that, you're going to want to make sure that the engine is a little bit warm. Uh, so maybe check that at the end if you're going to be doing some of these other things that I'm doing here because uh, you don't want to go ahead and mess with any of your coolant stuff while the engine is hot because this stuff can get to boiling and uh, yeah, you want to make sure that it's good. So that actually leads me into my next thing that I'm going to say here and that's going to be checking your coolant level. This was my main idea for this video because if you look here, you have your little overflow for your coolant. And as you can see here, there's a max line right up here and a min line down here. And you can see that my coolant level is pretty low. So uh, this can just happen over time. Um, you're putting a lot of miles on the car, stuff like that, it can happen. Uh, it'll just like evaporate and just kind of go down from basically using all the time. Or in most cases, you're gonna have some sort of small leak. Um, where my case it's probably just a small leak somewhere um, so you can just check these housings and these different little fittings here and just make sure that the all the hoses are good and stuff basically just look around and follow the pipes from here around your uh, around your radiator and stuff in the front and just kind of look and see if you can see any visible drips or anything like that but uh, yeah we're gonna want to just fill this up so you'll notice on your coolant cap here Mine says OAT coolant MS12106. So if you look that up, it's gonna give you a Mopar part um, or a jug of Mopar coolant. Now the issue with that is basically a lot of those jugs are gonna be concentrate. So it's gonna be a gallon of concentrated coolant, which you have to mix with uh, water. Now, in my case, I just need to add a little bit of coolant. I don't have that many miles on the car yet. It's not time for me to do a full coolant flush, which was what I was gonna do. In that case, you would just get the jug, get a jug of distilled water, mix them together, and pour it in after you flush it. Uh, in this case, I just need to add a little bit. So I didn't wanna buy that whole gallon jug of just concentrate and then have to mix it myself and figure out the numbers of how much I need, stuff like that. 
So I went ahead and got this. They have it on Amazon next day and you can see that it is Mopar and it's just the same thing, but it's just a 50-50 pre-diluted version. So if you're doing a full coolant swap, I would recommend just doing the other way, like I said, because you're gonna need about two gallons. Uh, where this is just one gallon, um, you could just buy two of these, I guess, and just dump it in. But in my case, like I said, I just need to add some. So I'm gonna kind of just do that and go with this and then I have some coolant if I need to add more. I'm just gonna take this cap off and there's gonna be a little cover in here, just like the usual little silver covers. Usually just punch it out. I don't uh, I don't really care too much. So hopefully this is the right color um, one. It looks like it's like a pinkish color, which looks like what's in there. So we're just gonna take this cover off. Let me just do this now without spilling this. So all we're gonna do is just take this little cover off, which like I said, you wanna make sure that your engine is not hot. So I only moved it from there to here really, really quickly. So you, you can feel around and nothing is hot in here, so you're good to go. You can see here, it's gonna come off with this little cap. Now one thing you can do is look in here when you're doing this and just kind of look inside of the cap area and just kind of look down in there and see if there's any kind of like sludge or buildup or anything like that that might need to be changed. In my case, it looks clean. Obviously it's a newer Jeep, so it's not uh, that big of an issue. But now we're just gonna go ahead and fill this up to between the min and the max level so that we don't have to worry about it and our engine stays nice and cool. Uh, so we're just gonna grab that and dump it in. Probably should use a funnel here, uh, but I'm probably not going to because yeah, you guys know how I do things here on the channel, so. All right, I lied, I do need a funnel. So I have this funnel, which is just the same one that I used for the oil change. I just washed it and basically just flooded water through it until uh, the water came out clear. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just basically jam this in here like this and uh, pour some coolant in until we're at that level where it's right in between the min and the max line. So it's not really gonna take too much to get there from where I was, so I just wanna make sure I'm not putting too much, a little bit more. That's probably good right there. So I'll show you guys where we're at. We're just below the max line, um, by kind of a little bit, but you'll see here in a second where it's at. So as you can see here, where the max line is, we're a little bit below that, so we should be good for a bit, uh, actually for a while, hopefully. Hopefully it doesn't have a leak or anything. I guess I'll keep an eye on it now and we'll be able to tell. But now you're just gonna wanna make sure you put your cap back on and tighten it down all the way and make sure it's actually tightened all the way because otherwise it won't be very good for your car. Just like that, max it out to where it needs to be. You'll tell because it's lined up uh, readable. And you see this is where it says, oh, coolant ms12106 so if you have 2013 or below uh, it'll probably say like h out or something like that uh, so just be aware of that and make sure you get the right coolant for your vehicle now while you're under the hood here you can check your washer level here which goes down to a pretty deep reservoir which is pretty uh pretty far down there but you should be able to see here from this cap and down um, it's not like something that's super important to your maintenance of your car but it is something that you're probably going to want to make sure you keep an eye on and make sure it's good uh, but yeah, for once it's there, you're pretty much good to go on that. Um, another thing you can check here on, on these vehicles, it's kind of different because the battery is actually like inside, but you can check your battery hookups, make sure they're not corroded or anything. But like in this case, like I said, because of how these Jeeps are and the batteries are inside, it's not really something that you have to worry about. Now that's pretty much all you're going to need to check inside the ve or under the hood, as far as I'm concerned for basic simple maintenance like this. And then obviously when you're under here too, just inspect your belts, make sure they're not like ripped or fraying or anything like that, just to make sure that they're good. Uh, just check your different belts and stuff like that, your connections, make sure everything looks good and it doesn't look like there's stuff leaking anywhere because then you'll have to uh, check on that. But yeah, just ch check around, make sure things like that look good. Your connectors are plugged in and everything and uh, you should be good to go under the hood. Now, the one last thing that I'm gonna recommend that you guys do for uh, some general maintenance of your vehicle and stuff that you guys need to do and keep an eye on is going to be your tire pressure So I feel like my tires can probably use a little bit of air uh, It's going to say on the edge if you guys have never done this It's going to say on the edge your tire size as well as your max psi So I believe it's 50 on these so you'll see here if we look it'll say max load 950 kilograms max pressure 314 blah 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 50 psi so you want to get kind of close to that number but you don't have to be exactly at the 50 you don't want to max them out obviously so probably like 43 45 on these would be kind of my sweet spot where i want to be 
Um, I think mine are a little bit low right now, so basically all you're gonna do is just grab your compressor, hook it up, which is just simple enough. You're just gonna pop the little cap off here and uh, just unscrew the little cap, put your compressor on until you are where you need to be. A nice thing on these vehicles is it does show you on the dash and the vehicle info what your uh, tire pressure is at if you have the newer cars with the tire pressure systems. So uh, that's like the easiest way to just check that. Um, if not, you can just use a little tire pressure gauge. But I'm gonna do that at a later time because mine are like kind of right where I need them right now. So uh, those are the basic things that I would say you guys should check on your vehicles and things that you guys should do and keep an eye on and kind of just maintain yourself because for them to add a little bit of coolant like that, they're gonna say it's added when you get your oil change. But either way, you're spending a hundred and something dollars to get an oil change, so you're already getting scammed. So that's why I say just do all this stuff yourself. It's super easy and basic. Major repairs, go ahead and bring it to the dealer. Um, obviously, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg unless you have that warranty. Max year warranty is always good. There's a bunch of other warranties you can get. But yeah, hopefully you guys got some uh, basic information out of this video. Like I said, these videos are kind of targeted just towards the everyday person who owns one of these vehicles and wants to maintain it themselves, who doesn't have any real mechanical knowledge. I uh, just kind of want to help you guys out and make sure you guys are able to maintain and take care of your vehicles a little bit better for a much cheaper price. So if you did enjoy this video, you got any information out of it, make sure you smash that like button down below right now. Help the YouTube algorithm, help this video go out to more people course help the channel grow if you're not already subscribed make sure you click the subscribe button down below right now to be notified when new videos go live new videos every monday wednesday and friday at 3 p.m here on the channel of course check out shop lifestyle get yourself some lifestyle merch but thanks for watching guys peace